Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, we're coming in with the kings of Napa. Let yeah, me say this man. right off the rip. We had no intentions of doing this show at all. You all have been in the comments saying, y'all going to do this or not? Now, didn't ever watch it. Yeah. But today, we had a day where we just were sitting around, chilling, not doing anything. It came on. Right afterwards, we were like, oh, we doing uh, oh, this. Oh, yeah, we doing this. Yeah. I said, it's too yeah. familiar. <laughs> it's going to be such an easy thing to review for us that it was just like, we got to do this. Yeah, because <laughs> we, we was basically, it's basically Queen Sugar and Green, Green Leaf. Leaf. With wine. All in one. Yeah, with wine. Real fact. <laughs> it is something else. I can't even think about what it is. But we're going to do episode one and two all together. It's not going to be your typical review from us because we're not just going to go scene by scene, line by line, what's going on. We're just going to summarize everything. So they're going to be doing like this all at one time. But y'all here for what I already know. Yeah. Episode one was Pilot. Episode two was She Gotta Crush It. So we have <laughs> the King family, right? And they seem to have their skit together. They own the vineyard. Like, they are producing their own wines. They have their own employees. Like, they are a corporation unto themselves. Self-sufficient. Don't need nobody telling them what to do because they are the ones telling y'all what to do. So I'm sitting here like, okay, I like this look. I like this vibe that they got going on and whatnot. You can tell that there's been maybe a financial struggle going on that the pandemic, because the father had kind of alluded to the fact if we can get through COVID, we can get through anything. anything. Yeah. So we see in the episode, <clears throat> right, there are a lot of, well, it's a family run business. So you have the daughter, two sons, one son that seems like he doesn't do anything, but just the youngest son, Christian, but buck around, buy fast cars, think that he's entitled to everybody's money. You have the oldest daughter, who's August. Mm -hmm. August is one of those people that she comes up with these great ideas. She's Charlie. She is Charlie from Queen Sugar. Yep. But it seems like in the past, maybe her ideas don't always pan out the way that they're supposed to, but then they do at the end. Right. You have the son, who is a little person. His name is Dana. Dana is the CFO. He handles everything financial-wise and... Because of that, I said, Andre. That's Andre. From Andre Empire. from Empire. Yep. <laughs> and because of that, he seems to believe that everything and all ideas has to go through him. Through him right. Because he sees the bottom line. And that ain't how it always works. Yeah. <laughs> we give you the idea and you run with it. You make the numbers make sense. Yeah. So we already see that there's a power struggle between August and Dana mm -hmm. from the rip. All right, so let's get into what had happened, right? So we see the father. He's out there in the vineyard, and he's kind of like that guy. Like, he has his own vibe. He's just right. chilling, smoking his cigar, sitting there drinking him a glass of wine, just looking over the things that he's produced, like the things that he was able to do. This man was a surgeon. So yeah, yeah then decided to buy a vineyard, and it... So we see... His daughter, August, come out there to talk to him about, you know, an idea that she had. And she wanted everybody to come together at the dinner table to speak about said idea that she had. We see another girl that came up, which I assumed at this point was a sister. Hold on. But it's cousin Bridget. So they end up going to have dinner. This is when you really figure out that they going to yeah. have some skit going on. It was going too smooth. Yeah. It was the setup for the <laughs> opening. <the> okay <laughs> so we get there and, you know, um, I can recall the girl Call Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> August gives her idea of what the next big thing for the vineyard should be. And it should be dessert wines. Like desserts within themselves have, have made a comeback. That's absolutely true in all aspects of life. Like right now, you see more bakeries yeah, popping yeah. up than you see. Like that used to be a thing back when I was a child. Go to the bakery and get single cookies and you can know, I want that one, that one, that one. Fresh like, bread and all that kind of stuff. Now they're making a comeback. So she was like, <laughs> we need to make dessert wine just as yeah. popular as desserts are right now. And the reason that they aren't popping right now is because there has not been a good campaign to target our targeted audience. Which is millennials. Exactly. Us. <laughs> so it seems like Dana's wife that's her domain. Like mm -hmm. she lives, eat, and breathe 
but she's not, from what I can understand, an official part of the business. She's just married into the business, yeah. okay? So at this table, she gives an idea, and the family, of course, Dana, didn't think it was a good idea. He said, that'll put up, they will tank us before we even make any profits, and we can't do it. What we need to do is what we did a few years back. Yeah. And make this, what was uh, it? Li a limited edition of Pinot Grigio. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, so what we're not going to do. And you would have bought that. <laughs> I would have. Uh, said, so we're not going to go back and do something that we've already done. We are kings. Yeah. We're supposed to come around here and do something <laughs> different. Make things pop around here. The father, he's like, he's all for it. You can tell that August is a daddy's girl. Like, and she oh, has yeah. her daddy's heart. Right. So yeah. he's like, we going to do it. And you make the numbers make sense. Christian over there is like, I want to start my bourbon line. Like, y'all keep pushing me <laughs> back. I said, this ain't nothing but empire. Uh, yep. <laughs> you keep pushing my ideas back to the back corner. He was like, in time, you'll get your little bourbon thing going on. And I was like, that's what's really going to get y'all out the hole is that they're going to bourbon. Yep. Because what we do know about some black folk, they likes that dot look. Yes, indeed. <laughs> bourbon, cognac. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yep. And if you market it correctly. And brandy. Boom. Dark. Whiskey. <laughs> dark. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're sitting there, and it seems like the time transitioned, and they went from dinner to maybe dessert hour or whatever. And the father had taken a step back, and he was he kind of pulls himself away at different times. You see he's with the family, then he's reserved. He's in there doing his own thing. And the first thing that came to my mind is, what daddy got going on? Yeah, what, what, what got you stressed out in this world? Yeah. yeah. Th that you always got to be with your own thoughts. Yeah. So he ended up coming back. Right. But they, their excuse was that he was very calculated, that he moved, so they knew him by his schedule. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing seemed off because off this because is how he is. That's how he is. That's yeah. how psychopaths are, too. Yeah. But anyway, so they ended up calling him back to the table, right? And they, I mean, the vibe is clear. Ideas have been laid out. Everybody's position has been solidified, and who's going to do what? You're going to follow this, and it is so. He comes back to the table, and now it's time for them to start discussing what their next trip is. Maybe I'm out of order a little bit with that. But now, anyway, it don't matter. The, yeah, but the trip, the trip was before that, but okay. it's cool. Yeah. So they started arguing about where their next family vacation was going to be. The daddy wanted to go to Martha's Vineyard. They wanted to go to Maldives. I don't, I don't blame him. He was like, we just coming out the hole. <laughs> we ain't trying to do a yeah. trip that costs that much money. Ended up the daddy don't got so stressed out. Not because of that, but just because of the children bickering with each other and whatnot. And he ended up grabbing his chest. I said, yeah, what I'm you're saying. not going to do is do an earnest <laughs> from Queen <laughs> Sugar, Sugar on, on us. us. Yeah, we just getting into this thing, man. Well, daddy don't hit the floor. And the next day we see we're at dad's funeral. Yep. He died. So this is when everything just starts going to hell. It's firing down quickly. <laughs> so we have August and she's sitting there and she's thinking maybe the stress that I put my daddy under by pitching this idea is the reason he died. Like maybe this was too much. I keep blaming myself for his death and whatnot. And the whole time she's getting ready to go inside the church and she's getting this phone call who she said was her ex back in the day. And she was like, Oh no, what you're not going to do is be calling me. You are married. <laughs> I know my daddy don't die, but uh-uh, we're not going to do this right here. Cool. We see his, the daddy's sister, his name was Reginald. The daddy's sister, her name was Yvette. <laughs> well, is Yvette. <laughs> Yvette and Christian, the youngest son, are sitting outside the church. And you could tell she is the messy, fun Tell it like it is. Cover she, your secrets kind of aunt. She that aunt to do stuff behind your mom and daddy back. And, and act like she don't know nothing. I'm going to give you weed. I'm going to give you liquor. I'm going to take you to the club. I know you ain't supposed to be doing any of that as long as you don't tell your mom and daddy. That's that aunt. Boom. <laughs> well, evidently she has her own wig line. So there are people going inside the funeral. She was like, I see you, girl. You yep. got a lot. I said, ghetto as hell. But I love it. Yep. So, they ended up having the funeral and whatnot. That was a hard thing to get through. Ended up coming back from the funeral. 
and y'all know how the process is. You start going through people's stuff. They went through his stuff real fast, though. Oh, yeah. So they started collecting some of his things, and they're all in the house just kind of be a support system for the mother. The mother's name is uh, Vanessa. Yeah. So try to be a support for her. <clears throat> and they're sitting around, and eventually they get to a point where they have to meet with the lawyer. Because the first thing my husband said was, did the daddy leave stuff in place? Leave place in place so they can continue to move smooth. Yeah. Because they're not moving smoothly. Yeah. Because Dana wants control. <laughs> Badly. Badly. So, yes. Yeah. So, the head of the estate comes over and he reads out the will and the positions that he, daddy decided that he wanted things to run in the case of his untimely death. Well, his wife pretty much keeps her position. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I mean, what she gave up her job as being a journalist a long time ago to focus on his endeavors with the vineyard business, the wine business. He decided, the daddy decided that, okay, Dana, you're going to continue doing what you're doing. You're good with numbers. CFO it is. As long as you remain mm -hmm. married to your wife. And I was like, huh? So I further want to know what that means. They didn't dig into that yet. But, yeah, I would like to know what that further means. Like, since he's the CFO, why can't he do it without her? Because she's the brains. So then he ended up giving Christian, I don't know if it was a like a corner. It was something about his bourbon. Pretty much yeah, so he, that his he's bourbon. Fun, he's funding the bourbon company. Yeah, so yeah, he's funding that. So he can get his little bourbon thing on and popping and whatnot. Yeah. Their, their cousin, Bridget, Bridget will still remain in her position at the company and she'll also get a raise for doing so. Okay, cool. Go down the line. His sister, which is, get these names right, Lord have mercy, um, Vanessa's sister-in-law, Yvette, she's going to be the head of, what was it, Stella? What was it? Was it marketing? Think no, it, Yvette, yeah, she was going to be head of marketing. She sell wigs and everything. She was going to be in control of the marketing campaign. So, that part. And then, last but not least, well, maybe it's not last. Maybe I'm skipping some things. We're going to name August the CEO of the company. Oh, Dana said, oh, no. This is bullshit. That's what he said. I said, Dana. August looked like she was more confused than Dana was. Like, wait a minute. Me? Hmm. Like, you going to put all of this responsibility on my shoulders. Okay, cool. Dana said he not here for it at all. And I said, y'all better watch that little motherfucker right there. Right. Come I on. don't trust him. Because people who were desperate for power would do desperate things to get it. We see Tate, we see Tate on power. What he doing. So Dana, it's coming. It is coming. Oh yeah. Alright, moving forward, probably a lot. We see that someone comes bursting through the door, right? I'm sorry I'm late. I'm sorry I'm late. I got stuck in when my plane. When the real bills get happen. <laughs> so the lady that came in was Vanessa's sister. She didn't make it to the funeral because, like we said, she said she got hung up in another country, had to stay overnight. Yeah. By the time she got released, my phone rang. By the time she got released, to get on her flight, the funeral was over. So now she's at home with the family. What was her name? Her name is Melanie. Yeah. So she wants to speak to her sister, Vanessa. In private. All alone, in private. And Vanessa, <clears throat> see, this is the thing. When someone tells you they want to speak to you in private, believe them. Believe them. In the words of my but, angel, believe them. But in Vanessa's defense on this part, she know her sister was with the skits. That's so why that, you take, that, you, you got to bet out what she's about to say. Or in other words, some people, you need other witnesses to hear what they're saying. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. So she said, no, we're all family here. We all know what's going on as far as the business and everything has been put into place. Whatever you got to say at this point, just let me know so we can all sort it out while we're all sitting here. All the decision makers are here. Let's do it. She was <laughs> like, no, I would love to speak to you in private. Long story short, old girl was like, your husband owes me. Well, how much was it? Ten million dollars. I was like, what? That's that's what really slapped us upside the head. It was like, ten million. 
He borrowed ten million dollars from you. Well, what you behind, do? Yeah, behind his wife back. Like what? What do you do? I want to know where you get that money from. Right. <laughs> So she was like, yeah. And she was like, my husband would never borrow money from you. Borrow money from you for what? She said, because we have a vested interest. It was like, what's the vested interest? And I was like, oh, hey, yeah, what is the vested interest? We have a baby together. And she's sitting right there. Like, what? Wait. So the whole time, the kid's thinking that she is, the cousin. is their cousin. But she their sister. God don't sound a lot like Zeke, don't it? <laughs> on power. Zeke think he think that's Auntie Mo Day. And he's the son. Mom. And just like her, she thinking that she the cousin. And she really a daughter. She's it's, a king. Yeah. So now we get to the point where old girl, the the Vanessa sister Melody, must lies a lot. Because Vanessa read her for filth. And she was like, you're lying. Just yeah. like when you said <clears throat> you was a Dallas cow girl. <laughs> you ain't do nothing but go to cheer camp. You told us that this and this happened. You said that her father was dead. Yeah. Didn't allow us to even go to the funeral. And I'm like... That's that's why she told her, whatever you got to say, <laughs> you can say it in front of us because she knew she, her sister was alive. But not this so time. So now... We hope. Now we get to a point where everybody is sitting here time, trying to digest Yeah. what the hell just happened. Bridget doesn't know how to process this because I've been around y'all my entire life as cousins. I wouldn't even know how to process it. It ain't even me. I can't imagine me sitting at the table and my aunt come in and I find out that my aunt is mom my mama. <laughs> I can't imagine. Your whole life is yeah. a lie. Yeah. So that means your mama and, well, your daddy, Not, well, your your daddy, daddy lied. lied. Your daddy lied. Too. Well, your mama did too. Well, his, her mama did. Yes. Her, her yeah. mama did. Yeah. So Vanessa loses her mind at oh, this yeah. point. She gets to spiraling out of control. Who wouldn't? Yeah. Because now your picture perfect life is now crumbling. Yeah. Like in and, and this happens so often. When someone dies. That's when the truth comes out. The skeletons oh, yes. just be <laughs> falling out the closet. Yep. People be walking behind you if, at the funeral, and you be like, who was that? Why they walking in with the family? Oh, child. Yep. That's that <clears throat> daughter he tried to hide, and she decided to come to the funeral. <sighs> and, and that's the thing that, like, so burn us up. It's like, well, his name was Reggie. Reggie. You have all this bullshit going on, and you die, and, and all that left lands in the lap of your family. That, that's the same thing that, hap that happened uh, in Black Panther. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when the son was in when son was in what New York or somewhere and, and the father knew he was dead and didn't bring him back to Wakanda. And now the new son got to deal with the got old to deal son. with the old son because he pissed off because he was left over there. Now we got the same thing <laughs> going on Kings of Napa. Now you got uh can't even remember her name that now she finding out that she's freaking one of the kids. Bridget. Bridget, she wanted the kids, and now and I know you're gonna get there uh, and, and her job is on the line. Yeah. That's what I would get ready yeah, for. Now so her, now Vanessa don't got to a point where now she's starting to take out the anger that oh, the husband did, right. the infidelity that he did with yep. her sister, and take it out on Bridget. Well, that's what the, the Bible daughter. said, though. So now the daughter cannot work at the vineyard because Vanessa is pissed. Yep. The children are like, Ma, you, no you can, one you knows You can't take grapes, it out on her. And no one knows grapes yep. like she does. This is a self-sabotaging moment for this business and she don't if you let D. her go. <laughs> she don't even care. She don't change and deactivated the girl's key card. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she can't get into the building. And Bridget is like, listen, this is all I have. This is my livelihood at stake. This is what I love to do. And Vanessa don't give a motherfucking care. Nope. So, but I feel it though. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, at this point, she don't even know what to think or what the process. She been a man for thirty years, over thirty years probably, and he done cheated on you, and you didn't find out about it until he was and in the ground. And this secret ain't like a two year old child. And this is a grown adult woman. And now you can't even ask him no questions. None. None. The first thing I wanted to say was, anybody gonna get the kids swabbed together to see if they really are siblings? But anyway, we are gonna get. <laughs> Whew. 
So the good thing about this situation is that it doesn't seem like the children care all that much. They're shocked by this news and they don't know how to process it, but nothing has changed with the children and Bridget. They don't really, that they, they August, don't, August is feeling the weight. She's feeling the weight because of the CEO thing, but right. she was like, you've always been like a sister to me. So now it's just official. You are a king. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And bad thing about it, I said, why in real life she really does look like Reginald? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to a point where because Melanie's introduction of your husband owes me all this <clears throat> money and you have a daughter didn't go as planned, she now, she was already lawyered up. Yeah. Which means that she knew this was going to get messy. Oh, yeah. So the lawyer that was calling <laughs> August at the funeral, who she thought that was calling her on some sneaky link thing, was actually calling her to talk business. Because now, Melody wants her money. Mm -hmm. She wants her money, and she wants it now. And before y'all buck up the business... <laughs> give I, me my money. Give me my money. But I wonder, though, did, did she make a one-time transfer of the $10 million or Was like, it over time? Uh, like, course, over a few years, you know, a million there, you know, three million here. So, like, how do we get there to yeah. $10 million? So now everybody in the family is trying to figure out what did he need this money for? Yeah. Because Dana, who keeps the books, he didn't even see nothing. Nothing has happened. Like mm -hmm. the, the books are clean. So even he said, he said, Dad never looked at me as a real man because he he couldn't look me in the eye. And because basically because I'm a little person, he didn't see me as equal as a man. So he found a way to undermine me and cut the books. Yeah. And therefore, I didn't know anything about it. His mama was like, buck what you heard. You need to figure you this need to stuff figure out. out. Yeah, because you CFO. <laughs> I said, yeah, you want to wear, wear the crown? Take the responsibility of the crown. But is it but is it fair for her, his mama to put that pressure on him, seeing that he wasn't the one that did it? His daddy did it. No, Not but him. because Dana is an a-hole. Yeah, that I, part I'm too. A, I, <laughs> I'll, let him, I'll let him eat that. So... Eventually, we get all the way to the point where uh, Melody was like, you know what? We'll settle this debt because I know that this is new for the family. It seems like y'all don't have it. We'll settle <laughs> at $5 million and my daughter has to get her job back. I was like, that ain't going to go through. Because Vanessa ain't, ain't about, to, about to bring her back. August Not was at this like, point. say less. <laughs> yeah. We're going to make that happen. The mama was like, I don't care what deal you made yeah, with the lawyer. Okay, she okay. cannot work here. And August, and August was like, come on, mom. Why would you take this out on Bridget? She is family. She's been family. Nothing should change about that. It's not her fault. She can't She can't help how she got here. Right. But that's the unfair part about it. But the, we know it's the reminder. It is. Every the single constant. day. The constant reminder. Every time she see Bridget... She's not going to see Bridget. She's going to see her husband with his package and somebody else's package. Yeah. That part. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually we get to a point, like I said, I'm going to be all over the place, but we're going to tell this story. We get to a point where we figure out what happened and when it happened. And this was an ongoing thing between Reginald and Melanie. Well, the first time it happened, <clears throat> come to find out it was at a time where Vanessa was supposed to be going on a trip or coming somewhere with Reginald and she made an excuse to not come because she was sleeping around with somebody else. Pause. <laughs> How is it that we got that bit of information and no one has and addressed nobody it? Nobody questioned it. Nope. So is Mama a known cheater? But Mama, but Mama flipped it. And started talking about all those instances of where she remembered things of with them together, like you said. So she was able to kind of deflect that. So I might have, you know, you just said one, but I just called out ten on you. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, so the time that y'all were this and the time I was in Jamaica, were you sleeping with him then? And Melody couldn't answer. So if the answer is no, you can answer no. She couldn't oh, answer. Silence so. is a sign of approval. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So evidently they've been sleeping together for a long, long oh, while. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fast forward. August starts to get these encrypted 
phone call mm -hmm. and was like, just because your father is dead, I want my hundred and was it one hundred fifty yeah. thousand? It was one hundred fifty oh, thousand. A lot of money. Because he was giving that to her, giving it to them, them whoever it is every single month. Every yeah. month. Oh, it was, yeah. And I'm like, what? okay, so you, you got ten million dollars from your wife's sister. And now you owe somebody one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a month. For that's, what? That's shaking you down. I'm like, did, 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 hey Reggie, did you have a gambling problem, man? Because oh, another kid out here. Because of course, you know, since we say this is kind of similar to Greenleaf, I'm gonna come back on Greenleaf and what you call what's the light skin pastor name was on Greenleaf. Oh, Skanks. Uh, Skanks. When the church was struggling, Skanks was going on the side and gambling mm -hmm. so he could have money. To pay for the church bills, and I'm like, was well, Reggie out here doing some big time gambling? To because because they was in a shortfall. So I'm like, did he have a gambling problem and owed a whole bunch of money? Because if you talk about them big monies like that, most time it's either drugs or gambling. Or oh, push. I don't know. <laughs> that's a that's a lot. For so August don't know what to do with this, and she's like. Okay, now we're getting hit with a whole lot. Daddy don't slap with Auntie Melanie. Mm hmm Cousin Bridget is Sister Bridget. Bridget. Yep. Now, and he owes Auntie money. Yep. That now we got to figure out a way to pay her back from. Right. And now I'm getting these encrypted phone calls asking me basically for a monthly stipend. And it's not going to stop. And they're letting me know that they know where everything. everything. Yep. So that means that we're not safe. So I have to pay this money. And they're threatening harm if they don't make the payments. So let's find out that they was making the same thre threats to the to dad him. too. So I'm like, he know who they are. So he he got to know how severe the threat is. For to you to paying. give up. Yes, you give up $150,000 a month to somebody like that. They, they ain't to be played harm. with, man. Mm -hmm. They meant harm. Right. So it comes a time where they decide, you know what, we're going to have to make this first drop. August ended up telling Dana about it. I don't think Christian knows anything about any of this. I think it's just Dana that knows about it and Bridget. So they ended up going to make the drop. He requested, the guy that called, August requested for her to come along. But, of course, she brought the two amigos. And after the money was picked up, old boy wasn't too happy about that. He sent another encrypted call talking about some. I told you to make the drop alone. And he let it be known that he's pretty much on the property. Yeah. So as we figured it, it has to be somebody that worked there. Or Dana. Or one of the family members. I said, this got Dana's, to me, it got Dana's name written all over it. He's sneaky. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't but I'm trying. Wait, I, I think the same thing you think. But I'm trying to figure out how was he able to shake his daddy down for that. Like, what did he find out, or what did he know? Yeah. And yeah. and back to um, was the sister Vanessa? Mm -hmm. I feel like Vanessa knows something too. Because, no, not Vanessa. Um, Vanessa's the mama. Yvette. Um, Yvette. The sister knows something too, because the sister told um I'm gonna get the names right. Told what's the main sister name? Dang. Um August. August. Told August, your daddy had a lot of skeletons. So you need to be careful. So I'm like, he had Oh, you're talking about Auntie Melanie. Yeah, she Auntie did. Melanie, yeah. That he had a lot of skeletons. So it's like, I think she know some stuff that he was in too. I think yes. both of them was in it together. In order for her to give him money like that, she got to know what's going on. He told her the story. Right. And because the family is pissed off and treated her like she don't exist, why would she give you intel of what's going right. on? Right. And like that, you sometimes you be hesitant to give somebody $10 for some gas. <laughs> and they come that. at you for $10 million? <laughs> and you actually give it to them. Yeah. I told I told Ooh. the queen, I said, Lil Wayne and Drake talk about the million dollar puss. I say, oh, Reggie got the million, the ten million dollar bank line. Right? Yeah. Well, Vanessa said it was big. <laughs> she, that was she said. I didn't yeah, say it. Yeah, that was she, she said. That was she said. So now we're getting all the way down to Bridget can't work. 
She cannot be on the venue because um I get why I keep wanting to call this girl Sonny. August had brought her back and let her work and the mama kicked her out again. Mm -hmm. So now she can't be there. And now August has gotten to a point where she was like, for my mom's mental health, Bridget, I'm gonna need you to stay away. You cannot come back on the vineyard. Like, I know, I know what I said, I know the agreement we made, but if I bring you back, she's mm -hmm. gonna have a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And Bridget was like, but why should I have to pay, pay for what I didn't with do? my job? You know right. how much I love this. And then come to find out later on, because Auntie Melanie had came and she was pissed off about it. She said, you know how mental health issues run in our family. Right. Now mm -hmm. Bridget is depressed because you've taken that one thing away from her that she loves and she can't do it now. I'm saying like this, this is, this is too... But I, I think, but much. I, but I think, if she never found those letters in that box when she was painting, the, the love letters that Reggie was sending to her, to um her, I think she might have would have had a, a slight chance of getting back in. But when they, when they was reading them letters and Vanessa, and, I was um, gonna say we, you gonna just go tell her about? It. We gotta introduce that. Oh my bad. <laughs> like my husband said, what had happened was because Bridget is an artist, she loves to paint, yeah. do different things, so she's painting. And she drops and knocks over some water and some, some paint or whatever. And she goes to clean it up because it had felt it had felt like in a file cabinet. She looks in the file cabinet conveniently. And she starts seeing these letters. And a cassette tape. I said, ooh, that burned my memories. Mm-hmm. The, the, <laughs> her mama, Melanie, and now her daddy, who used to be whatever... Are writing love letters. Yeah. And sending mixed tapes back and forth to each other. Like we said, an ongoing love affair. So I'm trying to figure out how did the love letters get to the daughter's house? The mama brought them. But why? But why? Why would you bring them there? And like Bridget say, the next time keep your dirty laundry out of my, my house. My house, yeah. So because Bridget loves August, I mean, she loves the King family. Yeah. She brought those letters to August to show her and was like, your mama can never know nothing about this. Because they're trying to get to the bottom of what is going on. Like, what's the skeletons? Well, what is one of the skeletons that keep falling out the closet? And that daggone Vanessa overhears yep. them talking about the letters. And she grabs the letters. And now Bridget got to go for. Real. Yeah, that's like what. Yeah, that, any, yeah, that was a catalyst for it any all. Any crack in the door is it's gone. gone now. It's gone. <laughs> Not only did y'all did they sleep together, produce this baby. They have been having this ongoing thing behind they got my the, back. They got the documented proof now. Man. They got the. They have the ocular proof. Yes. <laughs> I'm sitting here like Reginald. Boy, you were a piece of work. So here's some of the information that was kind of had me like, because August and Bridget are so close and they are trying to figure out what's going on. Come to find out that daddy Reginald and Bridget had their own daddy daughter thing going on mm -hmm. behind all of the children's back every month. They would go somewhere alone and just have like lobster roll time. Yeah. <laughs> and so August is sitting there like, when was this going on? Because none of us had like one on one time or, you know, yeah. daddy daughter dates and daddy son dates. Like, he made the time to have that with you. That was the guilt. That, that was, was the, the guilt. guilt. That was the guilt. But out of that, Melanie, I mean, um, Bridget let them know, said, you know, yeah. And it was right across from the bank that daddy, that uncle, daddy goes yeah. to. And August was like, Daddy Please. hasn't been in a bank, bank for years. He has a money manager who does all that. She was like, mm -mm, he, he goes in that, that bank. So now this is an opportunity for August to figure out what's going on. She has her dad's death certificate. She can walk in the bank and request some skit. Well, that's when they realized that he had a hidden account at that bank. And the money that that person was extorting out of them. Yeah, it was coming out of that account. He was withdrawing that money every month. So I'm thinking that that money that our little girl lent him, he probably deposited it there and keep taking it out. Taking it out, taking yeah. Taking it out, taking it out. 
Listen, these kings got a whole lot going on, but let me tell you, and we're going to probably end this here and talk about it next week and pick up next week. They have tours on the vineyard. You know, if you've ever been to a winery, you know that that's a part of what they do. That's a big part of their income. So they have people that come through, have these like intimate settings and yeah, all this stuff. Wine tasting. Wine tasting. Yeah. So there is a <clears throat> bridal party that came down from Baltimore. <laughs> and Vanessa usually leads these tours and give them a, you know, show them a good time. And that's, that's pretty much her thing. No one thinks that Vanessa should be doing this, but Vanessa insists that she's in her right mind and she can do this. Not this time. She got through one of them. Yeah, she got through one. This second <laughs> one? Oh. She took and grabbed a bottle, I mean a glass, chucked it down, and she said, ladies, let me tell you something. <laughs> Don't ever let a man rule your life. Don't ever stop your career for a man. I used to be a journalist and I could be up there with the who's who's, but no, I decided to follow his lead and come down here and do the thing. And then he messed around and slept with my sister, uh, had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Like she just went off and she was like, have a good day. It was like, <laughs> clean off. I was like, clean. Everybody looked at her. And the employees like, was like, what the hell just happened here? <laughs> so now the picture perfect, picture perfect life of the kings is right. it's just spiraling out of control. <clears throat> We gonna pick up on a real review on next week if you don't have anything yeah. else to say because we didn't write anything down because we didn't have no intentions of reviewing this. Real yeah. fast. So yeah, we're gonna definitely come back some more next week. But y'all put y'all thoughts and whatever it out in the comments. Let us know what y'all think about the show, which we're here. It's real good. So we'll see y'all same place, same time next week. Straight from the VA. The dirty dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla, Holla. boom.